Thank you to this faculty for hosting us uh, in such a nice way, and thank you to Professor Fogaritis for his two kind words. I hope I will be able to satisfy his and yours uh, uh, interest in what I'm going to say. So why is the Italian experience uh, relevant also for our study? Italy was the first Western country in the world to be hit by COVID-19 after China and some other countries in, uh, 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 in the eastern part of the world. So. That was important because we were the first one to be hit by COVID-19. We were not expecting to see COVID-19 coming to Italy. That was the first point. The second point, we had a lot of uh, legal issues concerning the Italian response to COVID-19. So uh, we, we, some cases reached our constitutional court. So we had also some points which clarified the, uh, how the Italian legal system was uh, reacting to COVID-19. Third point, it is interesting to know what should be the challenges and lessons for the future. Uh, first, I will try to introduce you shortly what happened in Italy. So uh, you have to imagine like a hurricane came in. That was the situation in Italy when COVID-19 arrived. Imagine that on the 24th of February, there was there have just been a conference of the most important doctors uh, in Italy saying, OK, Hopefully we are survived, we will not have COVID-19 because we had restrictions on the airports, uh, some border controls and whatever. Well, after a few hours, there was the first COVID-19 case in Italy. Actually, we had already had uh, uh, two Chinese people, but they were coming from China, so they were stopped. All the people that were around these Chinese people were put on, uh, uh, in the hospital in a closed environment, so there were, and it was in Rome, so there were, we had no other cases. But then we found out the first case of an Italian who had not had any contact with China. So we knew that COVID-19 was in Italy. And then after a few months, we found out that COVID was already circulating. That was the first case of COVID-19. It was a person of 30 years old. He was a marathon runner, so I mean in good health. And uh, he was in the hospital in a serious mm -hmm. health uh, situation. He stayed in the hospital for one month. So uh, it was a very serious case. So immediately, for the first time after decades, we had the health measure to be enacted immediately in the light. There was an order by the Ministry of Health together with the President of the region. They start closing, as you can see, with the military. They closed the uh, big areas in Rome. About 50,000 people could not move. The, the territories were closed. No people could enter, get out from these territories. Shops closed, offices closed, and so on. Uh, in um, two days, there was the first emergency decree law. Uh, the Italian government has the power to, uh, to make a temporary legislation, which has to be approved in 60, 60 days uh, by, the, uh, by, the, by the parliament. So there was the piece, uh, a new piece of emergency legislation giving power to the prime minister. According to the Italian legislation, as I, told, as I will tell you later, the power uh, in, in the case of health emergencies is up to the Minister of Health, but the idea was to give this power to the Prime Minister, of course, because uh, he, 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 he's, he runs the government. And this was an exceptional um, situation. Uh, in in a short, uh, the, the COVID-19 uh, uh, started spreading in, in Italy. So as you can see, there was a red zone that was in a wet part of Italy. In this, zone, in this area, it was impossible to move uh, to do activities. Then finally, the first lockdown measure was on the 8th of March. There was a decree of the President of uh, Council of Ministers, which is uh, the, the Prime Minister, who decided, uh, it was not very clearly written, this decree, but anyway, uh, it was very, uh, uh, very clear, the hashtag, uh, I stay at home, uh, that was uh, accompanying this decree. So the decree was not clear, but the hashtag was very clear, stay at home, except for a specific reason. So uh, the problem is that uh, this decree was announced hours before it was enacted. So people from the north of Italy took the train, the car, in order to move to the south of Italy. So uh, after uh, hundreds or thousands of people start moving, the idea was, OK, it's too late. We have to close all of Italy. So on the 9th of March, there was the so famous Italian lockdown decree. So uh, only uh, emergency shops or some activities could stay open. Close had already been closed a few days earlier for the first time after World War II. All, all 
schooling in, in Italy had been closed before the lockdown. It was on the 4th of March. So uh, this is uh, how was the wave at the beginning. And you can see the number of deaths was increasing. At the beginning of March, we had 1,000 people dying every day. So that was the, the, the top of uh, our uh, uh, emergency situation. Um, then, uh, uh, hopefully, when the summer was coming, I mean, the lockdown measures were quite efficient because they really took down, as you can see in the previous image, uh, they took down the number of cases and of dead people. So in summer 2020, we had no cases, no dead people. Um, so uh, we, we already opened uh, some discotheques in uh, Sardinia Island, which is a place where most Italian go, because it's very nice. And the problem was that in autumn, the COVID spread a lot again, as we know now. The, and the, the problem of this reopening was that uh, uh, while the COVID is in the north of Italy, uh, in autumn the, the COVID spread in all parts of Italy. But anyway, it, it already was spreading most of uh, Europe at that time. So we had uh, uh, then a second and third wave of COVID-19 with a lot of uh, measures to be taken. The difference uh, in, uh, uh, in the measure taken later was the introduction of a so-called colored areas restriction. According to the number of cases, there were different level of restrictions. Red areas, full restriction, you cannot get out from home. Orange areas, you can get out from home, but uh, gyms are closed and so on. So there were different kind of restriction according to the level of uh, COVID-19. Um, anyway, this is, uh, uh, the COVID situation in Italy from the beginning to the end. What you see here, that was the March 2020 COVID situation. It seems to be very low, but because we didn't have tracking at, time, at that time. So uh, we announced tracking system only later on, so we had other waves. Uh, but if you see the black line, which is very little here, we reached the, uh, the maximum number of deaths uh, in March 2020, and then uh, again uh, between November and December, only for one day, 2020. And that was the big wave of COVID-19. So this is the COVID-19. Then I'm coming now to this point. This is the part that I've been rearranged, so it will be a bit difficult for me to, to, to explain, but uh, I'll try to do my best. So uh, we had a lot of uh, issues in Italy. I'm trying to sum up uh, some of these issues, but I will concentrate only on a couple of them because we have no time. So the first issues are, I would say, general constitutional issues, and they relate uh, to they relate to the problem on which emergency powers can be used. Uh, what are the limitations on the use of emergency powers? Then the problem is, what is the balance? Um, and how can you deal with different rights? Is the right to health, uh, I mean public health, then we have also to distinguish uh, public health measure against uh, personal health measures, is a supreme fundamental right that uh, can, uh, uh, I would say, suppress, uh, eliminate all of other rights. Then uh, uh, we had the problem of uh, privacy for contact tracing application. We had a contact tracing application that never worked well. Uh, the competence, uh, Italy is a regional state. We have, it is not a federal state, but we have powers, health uh, uh, measures are taken usually by the region. So we had also a problem, who has the competence to take and enact measure? And then we have a problem of legal sources, which are the measure, the acts that can be used to restrict the liberty of people. And then the effectiveness of sanction to be used uh, in the emergency response. Or the sanctions in Italy have been very light sanctions, okay? So for no vaccination, there was a fine of 50 euros. That was the only sanction. And then administrative law issues. Uh, proportionality test versus precautionary test, because most of the uh, measures were enacted by administrative acts. And so they were challenged in front of administrative tribunals. And uh, also in the emergency situation, the courts never stopped working. They worked from, uh, from remote, but they have always been working. 
So then the problem, this is a dramatic problem, which was also uh, the colleague who talked about the European Union. Uh, there were also some indication on um, how to use uh, uh, medical products that have not been approved. And that was a problem that we had in Italy because we oversimplified them and we had the facial mask that did not work. So that was the outcome. And then there were a lot of other issues that concern, for example, if the hospital are full of people, which people are you going to take care of? Because at a certain moment in Italy, we had uh, hospitals that were full, especially in the northern part of Italy. We start transferring people to German and to southern Italian hospitals, but we had a lot of problems. This is something that is not said, but this is uh, a huge problem. So, and then we had other, I would say, more practical problems uh, uh, pandemic plans. We had a pandemic plan in Italy, but it has not been uh, updated since 20 years. So it was a very old plan. Uh, it has never been mentioned, but indeed the government acted following this plan, more or less. Then uh, testing and tracing uh, didn't work in Italy. It worked only probably in South Korea, the only country in the world probably. Then there was, we had the problem of communication because uh, we have the prime minister giving at eight, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock uh, uh, TV uh, interview saying we have just approved a new decree so as from midnight you will not be able to get out from your home. But I mean, this is not the right way to make communication, okay? So he put his face on television. I mean, he took responsibility for this, but you know, uh, it, it, it was not probably a good quality of communication. And then, of course, many, many other problems. Um, so let's go to, the, to some of the legal issues. The first legal issue is uh, who has the competence to adopt emergency health measures in Italy? And we have a problem because in Italy the competence in the health sectors is given to the regions, not to the central government. Okay, so there was only an interpretation, there is a clause in the Italian constitution that says that in case of international prophylaxis measure, the competence is up to the state. So the idea that after one year was upheld by the constitutional court is that in the case of an international emergency of this kind, the competence is to the state. Okay. That was the first problem. Mm -hmm. But then we go, and this is the decision of the court, as you can see, it arrived just one year after the beginning of the COVID-19 emergency. The second problem, uh, okay, here it is, the lockdown measures. Lockdown measures in Italy were tough. I mean, we, for 50 days, uh, even 70 days in the north of Italy, uh, Italian could not go to school, to work, uh, cannot get out, couldn't get out except for buying food. Um, and little by little, as they said, you can get out to go uh, to buy a cigarette uh, or for your dog uh, around your building. Uh, you can also, uh, even uh, you can also work around your building, but if we see you on the other side of the town, you will be fined, okay? But this is, okay. Uh, and of course, uh, 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 factories dealing with emergency products, with food, uh, on, with medicines and whatever, were allowed to, to work, of course, because we needed that. <laughs> And also computer shop were allowed to work because we work on remote and if your computer breaks down, what are you going to do? So there was a list of activities that uh, were still uh, uh, working. So the, the, the possibility to get out from your home was for work, if you work in activity which is still open. For health, if you need to go to the doctor, to the hospital. Uh, other situation of necessity, this was not uh, described in the law, but there was interpretation given by the Ministry of Interior and the or, or the Prime Minister. And uh, later on, we had the situation in which uh, during the second tour wave, uh, they decided that uh, uh, primary school should always be open. Uh, also, when there were a closure of shops, school should be open. And so there was the possibility for parents to bring their children to the school, although they were not going to work because the work was closed. So they tried to, they, to say that um, the school was a priority. So that was the only exception. We didn't have a strong uh, sanction except for people with COVID-19. If you if they found out that you have um, 
Uh, you have found to have COVID-19, you should stay at home or in the hospital, according to your situation. And going around uh, with COVID-19, there is uh, an offense to the public health. So there could be uh, a sanction. The problem is, and uh, yes, one of the other problems why Italy was uh, a good example to study is that we have a strong movement of Novax people in Italy before COVID-19. There was a strong movement of people who do not want to be vaccinated. Okay, so um, also the, the usual vaccination that you go uh, to, to you do to children are not accepted by some of these people. And after COVID-19, you know the uncertainties concerning the new vaccine, this group grew a lot. So they didn't want to be vaccinated. Some of them didn't even want to use face mask. So the problem is, uh, can you impose vaccination uh, um, uh, health measures also uh, uh, infringing other fundamental rights? Uh, and the main problem is um, such measure, the lockdown measure, are um, a measure concerning free movement uh, of movement, free movement uh, of the people in the territory, or are infringing the personal liberty. This is a big difference because in Italy, personal liberty, which means putting people in a jail, needs to be approved by the judge, while uh, uh, limitation to the movement can be approved in the cases provided by law by the administrative authorities. This is the big difference. Finally, it took more than one year, the case went to the to the court, to the constitutional court. I don't know where is it, the slide, and never mind. Anyway, the court said um, this is not an infringement or, or measure relating to personal liberty because there's, there's no use of force. There's still a, a, a wide margin of possibility of movement for you to get out from your home. This is only a measure concerning movement in the territory. So uh, the, our constitutional court upheld such measures. This is something that I took out, so it's not anymore on the slide. So uh, COVID-19 gave us uh, good opportunities. I mean, uh, I, I told yesterday to my colleagues, um, we, I mean, uh, we, li we are living in a, in a very interesting period. I mean, dramatic period, because we had two events, COVID-19, and the Russian-Ukrainian war, which are really shaping their future. And uh, especially in, uh, as concerned the European relations, the European solidarity, there will be something coming out from this, but also in a little, from, from other perspective. First of all, new models for the public administration. We found out that you can work also from remote. You have a lot of pollution, a lot of crowded. You see this image is the, I, 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 I put here two images. One is Venice, with the channels in which you can see fishes and you can see clear water, which never happened in the story of Venice, okay? And over there you can see the, the fog and the hurt before, after uh, the, the COVID-19. So, I mean, you know, closing factories, using less cars can provide a better situation. So. We should also understand that it is possible to live in a different way. Of course, it is not the best way, but we have to find a misc way to, uh, to work also in the public sector. So we are studying new models. And of course, we have different ministry of public administration. The, the previous minister of public administration will just change. We had just had an election. Want two people to go back to work. So in Rome, the traffic immediately increased a lot, and people not using public transportation. So it's worse than before. So the new minister, I hope, will, and he already said that, uh, will try to deal uh, and to find uh, a mixed situation. Challenge and uh, lesson for the future. And I'm going to the end of my speech. First, uh, we uh, are um, thinking that most of the powers is not belonging to the state. Uh, globalization, you know, the, the state cannot uh, uh, manage everything that is happening. We had the sovereign national uh, organization, especially the European Union, or in the case of Italy, we have regional bodies or private organization uh, um, that are thinking a lot of competencies. The only body that was able, the main actor in COVID-19 response were the government, the states. Again, in Italy, the regions 
manage very badly the COVID-19. They tried to make orders that were uh, um, annulled by the state, the, the government, or by the courts because of the government uh, challenging some orders in front of the court. So uh, this was a book of Sabino Cassese in which he was uh, explaining the role of international organization and uh, the crisis of the state. Probably COVID-19 is giving new opportunities to the state, but it's giving also new opportunities to the European Union as a strong federal state, who knows? But remember contracts for the supply of medicines, uh, the next generation European Union. So uh, it, some powers uh, were, were kind of given to the, to the European Union outside from its competencies, because you're right, there are no competencies in the medical sectors. Uh, we are the CDC, but it's, it has no competence in telling the states what to do. It has some very light coordination task. So, uh, state is a guarantor of external security. This is typical situation of the state. The state has guarantor of internal security and public order against terrorism and uh, other kind of situation. The state uh, has an important task uh, as the guarantor of the safety of its citizens. Remember, public health, the origins of the health interest of the state was in protecting its citizens from kind of pandemics. If you go to the regions of the interest of the state, the first measure was, we don't take care of me or you because you are ill. We take care of you or me because you can be a problem for the rest of the population. The quarantine measure, the <coughs> typical quarantine measure was, we take people outside from the community in order not to be a problem for the rest of the community. So that, this is the original role of the state. Then, of course, we are, we, were, we are not used anymore to think about this because for us the state was uh, helping people, everybody, from cancer, from this kind of diseases. But the pandemic is something that we forgot because the last pandemic in Europe was one century ago, 1918, remember this, and 1919 because it took three waves. So, and then of course the state is the guarantor of uh, self-interest in the strategic sector. And again, with this situation, remember telecommunication, energy. Those are key issues that we have to keep in mind again. So, uh, I'm coming with some Latin uh, motto, uh, which are the most important task of the state. Let's go to Cicero. And he said he has to protect itself and its citizen. So, this is uh, what the state has as its main task, whatever the situation is. Some lesson for the future, and this is the real last one. First, uh, let's, it is important to strengthen the competence of international bodies. Uh, the World Health Organization uh, was very late, was very, uh, did a lot of mistakes, because, for example, only later said that we have to use face mask and so on. It also testing there were instructions of the World Health Organization that were uh, wrong, as we found out, because at the beginning they said test only people that have uh, symptoms uh, and uh, contacts with China, while uh, we had a lot of problems following this instruction in Italy. Uh, we need to strengthen Europe in this respect. So we already have a civil protection service, but we have to strengthen powers also for these kind of emergencies. Uh, we have uh, to probably, this is typical of Italy, to come back to a more territorial, which means diffuse system, doctors that are able to follow people also from remote, uh, but not only con do not concentrate emergency in the hospital, this kind of, we have a lot of problem because the hospital where the places where the COVID spread from. Okay, you bring a person in the hospital, it will uh, contaminate all of the people who work in the hospital because of the doctors or because of other patients. And then uh, it is very important to be very, very careful uh, in introducing the regulatory regime, which means exception to the rule. Always be very careful, and if you do, introduce check and balances system. Thank you very much for your attention.